So Carter, the Nebraska women already celebrated their 30th CIT championship, a 102 to 47 drubbing of Wisconsin. We think this game's gonna be a little more competitive, very evenly matched. And I think a lot of the fans out there hope so too, because I mean, Nebraska, it's been a very dominant school in this tournament, but hey, the Falcons are coming in here as the defending champions in the men's division for the 2019 CIT tournament, and that's duly in part because of the 2019 MVP in Jordan Johnson for them. Yeah, and Jordan was spectacular yesterday in the drubbing of Chicago. Yeah, he did a fantastic job. 20 points and six rebounds for the, for the man that's in the 1,000-point club in the program, so it's a nice job to see that guard. But really carrying the weight that I thought, Jerry Zietlow had 22 points and three assists yesterday. So spreading the wealth around for the Falcons, you can't just think if you're the Bulldogs, you're going to shut down one Falcon. It's going to be a whole team effort to slow them down. So yesterday it was 106 to 74, Wisconsin over Chicago in, in the first men's game. So it was a raucous crowd, right? We had almost 3,000 people packed into Geisman, and right away the Falcons just asserted themselves, got the crowd out of the game, and walked out with a 30 point win. How impressed were you with the medal they showed the Falcons? Oh, the shooting performance was phenomenal. Yeah. They shot 60% from the field. And that's something that you never see usually season high for them. And they just took quality shots compared to Concordia Chicago that was really forcing the shots because they were playing from behind for most of the game. On the flip side, Concordia Nebraska jumped out to a 50 to 24 halftime lead yesterday against Stan Arbor. And no problem for them winning by 22 points. They were led by Sam Scarpelli with 15. Tanner Schuck dropped 13 points. A dominant win yesterday for Nebraska, and they'll look to make it a clean sweep tonight. And it's not something that's uncommon for them. This program has been dominating as of late. And with the players, as you can see, there's so much size and athleticism on this court right now. We got players throwing down dunks left and right. There's a lot of intensity, and it's going to be a fast-paced game. Who are you looking on at this Nebraska side? It's an interesting team because... They don't really have anyone who stands out like Jordan Johnson, who's super dominant. It's just a well-balanced team, sort of a different hero every night. Playing the matchups, who could be that hero in the championship game? We got a bunch of actually potential candidates, I feel. There's one from each category when you're looking at it from the stat sheet. Obviously, Tanner Shuck, he's a member of the 1,000 Point Club, and he's been phenomenal for the Bulldogs throughout the season. But if you look on this man, you got a big man right now in Chul Beal. Six points yesterday, eight boards, and he really shut down Paul Sisk yesterday at Ann Arbor, the 6'9 big man that was supposed to be a big offensive threat. But also, too, Sam Scarpelli, 15 points, three of five from downtown yesterday. So a lot of threats that the, that the Falcons need to cover tonight. Just like the women's team, the Nebraska men's team has a lot of CIT lore. 27 time champions, three of those coming since 2014 under their seventh year head coach, Ben Limbach. For Wisconsin, not quite as much long-term success, just four CIT championships. All of them are under their 13th year head coach, Sean Cassidy. Four CIT championships, the most recent last year under MVP Jordan Johnson, the 6'6 junior out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Averaging 16 on the season, and last year it was the same situation up in Ann Arbor. Title game, nightcap against Nebraska. He dropped 22 points, 10 rebounds, and we'll see if he's up to the task again tonight, Carter. And we'll see what happens tonight. We're looking for a good heart, and it's going to be a lot of fun tonight, especially we're looking for a competitive game. So today we've seen just about every type of game, right? The first game, the women's side, Ann Arbor against Chicago, a pretty competitive game, but in the end, a, a relatively convincing win for Ann Arbor. The second game, a one-point win for the Ann Arbor men over the Chicago men, nearly a buzzer-beating layup from Landon Gladney that just did not beat the buzzer, a lot of controversy and pressure at the end of that game. So that was a nail-biter. The last one, the women's championship, was a total blowout. A 50-point win for Nebraska over Wisconsin. What might we see in this one? Because it feels like today we've gotten a little bit of everything. 
And to be honest, I could say this is going to be a close game, and it might not be. And if I say it's going to be a blowout, it probably will be a close game. We don't know what to expect here because of just the vast variety we've seen in scoring and plays throughout the year. So we're just a few minutes away from the starting lineup introductions. We'll take a quick timeout in advance of the final contest of the night. Championship right around the corner. Nebraska, Wisconsin coming at you in two minutes. Right back at it in a few on the Cougar Sports Network. We have reached the final game of this year's CIT, the men's championship game between the Falcons of Concordia University, Wisconsin and the Bulldogs of Concordia University, Nebraska. Let's meet the starting lineups first for the Falcons. At guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Number two, Jared Jose. At guard, a 6'5 junior from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Number 12, Joey Zietlow. At guard, a 6'3 junior from West Bend, Wisconsin. Number 14, Cam Flowers. At forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Plymouth, Wisconsin. Number 15, Brandon Keller. And a guard, a 6'6 junior from Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Number 24, Jordan Johnson. The assistant coaches are Dan Miller, John Kane, and Patrick Doherty. And the head coach of the Falcons is Sean Cassidy. And now here are the starters for the Concordia Nebraska Bulldogs. At guard, a 5'9 senior from Seward, Nebraska. Number three, Brevin Slope. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Crete, Nebraska. Number five, Carter Kent. At guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Loveland, Colorado. Number 10, Justin Wisma. At forward, a 6'4 senior from Grand Island, Nebraska. Number 21, Tanner Shuck. And at forward, a 6'8 senior from Grand Island, Nebraska. Number 30, Chol Beal. The assistant coaches are Lance Corral and Brendan Boomsma. And the head coach of the Bulldogs is Ben Limbach. Win over Ann Arbor. Up here in the broadcast booth, it's Sam Brief. It's Carter Gledhill here in Geisman Gym. Game four of four today, game eight of eight in the CIT. And Carter should be a fun one. Give me your keys to this matchup. Keys today are just going to be play fast and play hard. It really, both teams look to be evenly matched on the stat sheet. And it's just going to be a dogfight to the end, I hope. And it's going to be a team that can do the little things right to the end, not turning the ball over, and forcing the other opponent to really change their game plan. Wisconsin in blue, Nebraska in white. We're underway in the men's championship game. And a quick three for Flowers off. Here come the Bulldogs the other way. This is Weersma. This is Slope with the ball. Their leading scorer, Slope out of Seward, Nebraska, right where Concordia is located. Hometown kid. Here's Shuck. In and out. Falcon ball. Under the basket. Joey Zietlow converts. Great job by Zietlow identifying in the bottom of the paint and just be ready to shoot. It's going to be quick because the Bulldogs are going to collapse anytime you get even close to the paint. 
Macho Beal down low. He's rejected. Jerks the other way. Whistle blows. He stepped out. Zitlo, foot on the line. We'll go to the Bulldogs. This Falcon team offensively oriented, but unlike a lot of modern teams, Carter, they don't do it really behind the arc. They're third in the NAC, scoring 80 points a game, but last in the NAC in three-point shooting, below 30% as a club. That's kind of rare in modern basketball. It is kind of weird because the modern basketball game is the three ball is so important to your game but it's just a well-developed, they're gonna do the 15-footers, they're gonna do the 10, they're gonna do the layup, they're gonna do everything that's not so flashy, but they're still gonna put up a lot of numbers on you. Jers, pass picked off. Where's my the other way? One on three, no problem for Justin. And looking at the matchup, Carter, on the flip side, You've got a Nebraska team that defends the three-point line ferociously. Yeah. They give up just 31% for behind the arc, leading the G-Pack in that category. And you just see the aggressiveness that they have on the defensive side, similar to the women's team. Kent, got it! We really didn't mention him in the pregame show because there's so many other people that we talk about as effective for the Bulldogs, but he was the reigning G-Pack freshman of the year last year. Also, high school valedictorian. Smart kid, but he gave up a layup there as the reigning CIT MVP. Jordan Johnson comes through with his first bucket. Three off. Chol Beal, the offensive board, and the big man converts. And you just see him being so big and powerful, grabbing the ball out of the air. And you see it took him one pivot step to get you on your backside, and he, all he needs is that little movement. Chole, a transfer from McCook Community College in Nebraska. Team leader in blocks and boards. Here's Jers, a spin move, picks it up, passes to Zietlo. He was excellent yesterday. The blonde-haired kid steps back, shoots it, and misses. Beal cleans up the board. Slope feeds Kent. He finds the rim, and it'll go to the Falcons. A lot of energy. It's kind of palpable. It is, and even though Concordia Chicago is not playing in the game, there are definitely some Chicago students that came out to watch this game because it's still going to be an exciting game tonight. Two teams playing for a championship, and that was Brandon Keller providing the oop. Slope on the outside, he's stuffed. Brandon Keller didn't even have to jump. Zietlo and the foul. The Falcon faithful going crazy. That wasn't a full dunk, but man, oh man. That's one that he's definitely gonna put on his highlight reel. It's two points nonetheless, it didn't look too pretty, but fired up the crowd and put his team on top. And that helps. These two teams played for a championship. And the energy here in Geisman through the roof. Down low, it's Keller working on Beal. He goes up and comes up with nothing. Wiersma the other way, speeding to the hoop. He's fouled. You see him run into the bleachers over there. We talked about so many times, those bleachers are so close. Ran into the four drum over there. First free throw, good for Justin Wiersma. And now our first subs of the game will bring Jared Jers in for Nebraska. 
And Tanner Wubbles. Or excuse me, Grant Karsten in the ball game for Wisconsin. Karsten, an Illinois kid out of Decatur. That's where the Chicago Bears started. They were the Decatur Staleys back in the day. That's why the mascot is Staley. Johnson on the outside. He's at the left wing. Crossover, 15-footer, a bit too short. Beal cleans up the glass. Spin move. Nothing for Kent. I love the aggression by both teams right now. You just see everybody hustling to the ball, and it's a high-paced game already. Outside, Jers. Off to the right. Now it's Shuck up the court. Tanner Shuck, a Grand Island, Nebraska native, gives it off to Wiersma, who converts, and the foul. Justin Wiersma high flying. He got to the hoop in a hurry. He did, and you know, it's great when you just see him fight through the contact right there, being strong, and he really wanted that one. Ryan Holt into the ball game, coming in for Beal. Holt at six foot five in the front court. He was actually born all the way out west in San Luis Obispo, California. From there to Highlands Ranch, Colorado, where he went to high school, to Seward, Nebraska, where he's a bulldog, representing here just west of Chicago. Free run now, Scarpelli leading it. Cross court pass for Wiersma who stepped out. It's easy to tell these two teams know each other. Last year, Wisconsin got a 16 point win over Nebraska in the first round of the CIT. And Falcons went on to win their fourth CIT title. So the second matchup in a row. And so far it's been neck and neck, but a five point lead for Nebraska. And now Scarpelli will lead the break. He pulls up at the three point line. Kent, got it. Timeout, Wisconsin. How and Carter Kent with his second tray. That was so pretty right there. Carter Kent, fantastic three right there. Just, it was a beautiful shot. It's a 10 nothing run for Nebraska. It was 9-7 Wisconsin as we get another look there at that pretty Kent shot. Carter, what's gone right for Nebraska during this 10-0 run? Any adjustments you've noticed? What's gone right is that they've gotten 12 fast break points right now. They're really pushing the Falcons to their breaking point, and they're just going at them right now. And really, that's something that the Falcons struggled with a little bit against Concordia, is when they did get into the transition game, they did lose some struggle with when you got Rashawn Amos and Landon Gladney that were pushing it up the court. So the Bulldogs replicating that kind of a style from the, from the Cougars last night. There's a little wet spot in front of the Nebraska bench and the whole team, including there's, is that Drew Olson down there, the women's coach? Yeah, he's, that bald head down there is wiping up whatever mess. It's like the whole team, plus some of the Concordia Chicago staff is cleaning something up. Yeah, that's Drew Olson, who just won his 11th CIT championship a couple minutes ago. Now helping the cleaning crew out. See, look at that, you got the Falcon Fanatic right over there who's doing the same thing. Here's Jared Jurst looking to stop the bleeding and he carried the ball. This 10-0 run has spanned Two and a half minutes. And right now the Bulldogs looking to capitalize on all the momentum. Lake George into the game. Number four in blue right now defending the ball. 
Justin Wiersma's got it. Gives it off to Holt. George switches on to him. Scarpelli knifing in, turning, passing. It's a 12-0 run thanks to a sh Tanner Shuck lay-in. See Scarpelli right there, just beautiful play. Did he get the shot he wanted, pivoted around, and then found him on the back side. Lake George. Ball gets stuck. It'll stay here. Sam Scarpelli, just five foot nine, from all the way out west in Oregon, a transfer from Clark College in the Pacific Northwest. He's been leading a lot of these fast breaks, Carter, and you mentioned a big reason for this run is those fast break points, and Scarpelli off the bench, really a big reason why. And he's just been pushing tempo the whole time. He's already got two assists in this game early. Well, you just see, if you could just keep pushing up and down, it's really, you can just run up the score at any point. That free throw ends what was a 12-0 run. Still a nine-point lead, and Scarpelli leading the charge. Kent gives it off to Holt. Pounding it inside, but he's stripped. Lake George, one on three, coast to coast. Look at that nice Euro step around there, just exploded. Split three defenders. Here's Wiersma behind the back. Nearly lost it, now he did. But it'll stay right here. The message from the Concordia Nebraska bench Move the ball. I want to see a little more ball movement from this team. Gage Smith, number 41 in the game, and he gets the ball. A little messy pass from Scarpelli. Kent, three. Yes, sir. Carter Kent again. He's got nine. Three of four from behind the arc. He's just been that go-to guy. Falcons got to find an answer quick for him. Johnson, a long two. In and out. Nebraska's got the juice right now. Scarpelli at the right wing, gives it off to Kent. Thought about a three, he's gonna go right to the hoop, but come up empty, and then commit a little frustration foul. In Nebraska's win yesterday over Ann Arbor, Scarpelli led him with 15 points. Tanner Shuck also in double figures with 13. It was a 50 to 24 game at halftime and Bulldogs never looked back. Johnson, no good. A little tie up and the ball will go the other direction. First half so far owned by Nebraska. And the Bulldogs are a first half team. This season, they've outscored their opponents by 147 points in the first half and just 19 in the second. So it's a team that gets out to a big old lead and then says, all right, get the bus started. Exactly, and that's all you gotta do if you can just be explosive but right now it looks like the Falcons are just slowly keeping pace, only down 10 right now, about halfway through this first half. A 15 to three run over the last five minutes after Nebraska trailed early. It's gonna stay here, but Lake George is adamant that it should stay with the Fal that it should go to the Falcons. It was a nice little dance move from the Bulldog. Kent, he's been the hot hand. He gets a clean look. Offensive board, Scarpelli a three. 
Bulldogs misfiring with the chance to double them up. Ball spills into the corner and it's a Bulldog ball. Here comes a sub. Isaiah Tanette, Sacramento kid, comes in for Jers. Tanette, a three-sport athlete from Highlands High School in the Sacramento area. He was a spectacular football player, quarterback at Highlands. Has a few California state records in a state where football is huge. And Scarpelli with a three. Scarpelli on the season shooting almost 41% from behind the arc and demonstrating there why he's been so good. Tanette handing off to George. Swinging it around, here are the Falcons. It's the second time it's gotten stuck. I think I've checked everything off of the, I've seen it at CIT. We've, I forgot about the ball getting stuck on the side of the net. And then you get it twice in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. Carter Kent gets a nice little applause as he heads to the bench and there's the Falcon. And you look over there, who's a good boy? Yeah. All right, message to our crew. Can we can we keep the camera there all game, please? Now nah, I guess we got a basketball game to follow. You know, there's two right there in the top left corner. You got the Nebraska yeah. women's team. I hope that dog stays right there. I got to go pet that dog at halftime. I love myself with a little Oh, super cute dog. Are you a dog guy? I am. I got a dog of my own. What kind? Tell oh, me. Boy. Name, age. Name's Buddy. He's about 12 years Aww. old. Yeah. Buddy. Yeah. What kind? He's a Vishla. What is a Vishla? It's uh, kind of like a German breed. It's kind Exotic. Of Ex hunting dog, kind of. Wow. Yeah. A Vishla. I've never heard of that. I've got a nine-year-old standard poodle named Murray. Gotcha. I'm sure you've heard of poodles. Scarpelli saved it, but went right to Keller. He hands it off to George, who spins, puts it up, and he was fouled. That's going to go against Chol Beal. Nope, never mind. Tanner Shuck whistled for the foul. Nice shot there you got from our GoPro cam. Under the north, north basket right there, you see how Pat Geisman is for this game. Oh, yeah. Thousands have poured through the Geisman Halls this weekend for the 69th annual CIT. AJ Watson into the game for the first time. Such a special weekend every year. These four schools competing. Coming from Nebraska, Wisconsin, Ann Arbor, and Chicago. Switching off who hosts it every year. You get the bands, the mascots, the cheer squads, of course the teams, alums, parents, students, administrators. It's a four day party and so far this has been a Nebraska party. About an hour after their women won their 30th CIT championship, the men are doubling up Wisconsin, 28-14. Nine minutes left in the first half. We'll take a pause here on the Cougar Sports Network. Back in a moment. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school, it's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Hey everyone, welcome back. 28-14 Nebraska leading Wisconsin. And this broadcast is brought to you in part by Chick-fil-A, proud sponsor 
of Concordia University Chicago Athletics. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, Chick-fil-A in Melrose Park has you covered. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. Sam Brief and Carter Gledhill with you for the nightcap championship showdown between the Bulldogs and the Falcons. All Bulldogs so far, my friend. It has been all Bulldogs. You've seen them pushing the pace right here. Five of 10 from beyond the arc. And how about Carter Kent, three of five behind the arc too. He's been absolutely lights out and the Falcons are kind of struggling to find an answer for that. It was 9-8 Wisconsin a few minutes into the game and since then a 21-5 run for Nebraska. It's put it firmly in Bulldog control. Scrum in the corner. Comes up for the Bulldogs. And now a Falcon foul. A.J. Watson lobs it. Shuck. This is Slope. And now Tanette leading the charge. The high school quarterback sets a screen, giving way to Flowers, who hands off to George. He powers in. Tanette a corner three. Bulldogs the other way. Wiersma. Kisses it in. But what a great look there from Wiersma, hustling up the court there, and you can just see the court vision by Brevin Slope, just absolutely just doing a fantastic job, continuing that aggressive, fast-paced game. Keller trying to stop the bleeding. There you go. Keller yesterday finished with 10 points. Also had two offensive rebounds. You can see there just continuing where he left off yesterday, being a force in the paint. Shuck drains a tray. Tanner Shuck. He's got over 1,000 points in his Nebraska career. And three more there. Zietlo powering in. He draws a foul. What kinds of adjustments does Wisconsin have to make? It doesn't seem like there's any one part of the game where they're being flat out dominated. They're just getting kind of out hustled, out played right now. And that's exactly it. They've just been getting out hustled and because they've been getting out hustled, they haven't been in their defensive stance that really has been a good keystone for them and their success. But the fast break points right now is we've seen 14 for the Bulldogs. And even in the fast break, they're just setting up three after three and just running it up on them. Their MVP, Jordan Johnson, back in to try and turn the tide. Alongside a fresh face, Garrett Hoffman, 23 in blue. Belgium, Wisconsin native. Here's Schuck whipping it out to Wiersma. Kent bounces to Beal, and Chol comes up with it. Somehow, some way, and now with two. Brevin Slope just getting fancy with that one behind the back. Hoffman, who just entered the game, gives it up to Zietlo. Joey lobs it down low to Keller, who will chal challenge Beal. And Beal wins that battle a lot. And he does. Just look at the size he has. Again, the fast break, fruitful for Nebraska. But look at how fast everybody's hustling down there. Chole even beat him down there. Just all white jerseys are going as fast as they can and really, like you mentioned, out hustling the Falcons right now. It's a 19 point lead for the Bulldogs. We'll take a pause, 6.14 to go in the first. This is the CIT, back in a few.
Back at it here at Geisman, and in a few days, Cougar basketball will be right back here on campus in River Forest. You can tune in right here where Cougar basketball is always brought to you in part by Lutheran Public Radio. Listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere at lutheranpublicradio.org or visit the LPR app. In this men's championship showdown, it's been all Nebraska. The fast break points, 16 to five in the Bulldogs' favor. And here's Wiersma sprinting up the court. Kent knifing in. Kicking to Shuck, who's got 12. Blocked at the rim. And then a frustration foul. How about Brandon Keller with the rejection? That was fantastic. Keller, he's been, anytime I feel like there's been some kind of close contested shot, he's just found his way and gotten in there. He's got a block tonight, but he had a couple last night too. Brandon Keller, big kid at 6-7. Third in the knack with a 63% field goal percentage. Also a high school football star out of the great state of Wisconsin. And now firmly in the bonus, Johnson hits the front end of a one and one. Last night on the free throw line, the Falcons were 19 for 23. So kind of the same thing that we've seen a couple times throughout a couple games today. The free throw line is a chance for you to get back in the game when you're down as right now, 16, now 15. And Johnson converts, but he's been pretty quiet tonight. Six points, I feel like we just haven't said his name much. No, we haven't said his name much, but at the same time, it's really been hard to get him going when you got this Bulldogs team that just keeps running the score and running fast paced. Kent to the hoop. He'll have two. Foul against CU Dub. It's Hoffman with his first. Kent last year was the GPAC Freshman of the Year. That's the Great Plains Athletic Conference that the Bulldogs compete in. He was also a High school baseball star, two-way player out of Crete, Nebraska. He had his high school record for not only career ERA, but also batting average. So the best pitcher and the best hitter in high school in his high school's history. That's impressive right there. Talk about tools to sport athlete. What a rejection by Beal. But Keller still puts it in after a highlight block by the big man. That big man just stopped a huge dunk, but geez, look at the force that he came down, stopping him right in his tracks on the way up. I hope we can get another look later at that monster rejection. Maybe a little chance for the Falcons to gain a little steam before halftime. It's Johnson with a smooth drive, and Beal affected that shot. Yeah, you know, that 6-8 frame right there, just that wingspan, he had to go around that really wide just to even get that thing up. Corner three, yes sir. Ryan Holtz puts it in, leads back to 17. And seven for 15 from downtown tonight for the Bulldogs. For the Falcons, there you go. A little spark provided by Mr. Hoffman. Kent goes in, nothing. Falcons got it, down by 14. Sure they'd love to make it a single digit lead going into halftime. Hoffman, too strong, Beal gets it. Choll's been a monster on the glass, six first half boards. It's a three for Slope and a make for Slope. Why not keep shooting there if you've been having success all day? 
Look at that, you got Brevin Slope running into the assistant coach on the bench. And Holt just takes it. He said, my ball. Slope turns, fires to Kent. Carter bounces inside, and that one goes out of bounds off of Justin Weersma's feet. The energy, though, from both fan sections. All right, we're sitting in the middle of it, kind of sandwiched in between, but we can just feel it. Both sides going at it, and it's really uneasy, too. I still want to play tuba by the end of the night. Keller in the paint over Beal. There's Zitlow to clean it up. Firing up some of the Falcon fans to our right. Scarpelli running into some trouble and the Bulldogs will reset the offense. Approaching the two minute mark, they're up by 15. Here's Slope, the southpaw bouncing to Beal. And now Kent fires and drains it. You're talking about someone that's been hot from downtown. That man is heating up the fourth three of the night. He leads all scorers with 13. It's a foul on Carter Kent, so. Thanks to the bonus, we'll have free throws coming up for Johnson. Where's my in for Kent, who's got 13 points, four of six from downtown. Just picked up his second foul, so imagine he'll sit for the remainder of the half. Still, what a first half he's had. Jordan Johnson at the charity stripe. Had 22 and 10 last year in the title game. In the first half, he's got eight and four. Eight points, four rebounds. Last two minutes, always important. Will Nebraska keep the momentum and keep a stranglehold on the title game, or can the Falcons sneak in a little run before the locker room? Long three, wow, Scarpelli from NBA range. They've got 50. Hoffman a step back, clean. Here's Justin Wiersma. Scarpelli's hot. He feels it. Giving it to Bull. Outside, a clean look for Wiersma. He missed, and here come the Falcons. Johnson working on slope. He off with the mid-ranger. 10 second shot clock, game clock differential. It's Scarpelli over to Slope around the perimeter, but now powering inside. Scarpelli, too short, follows the ball, and it'll stay right here. And How about the effort from the 5'9 guard? And look who's coming back in right now for the Bulldogs, number five, Carter Kent. He might be looking to get the last shot at the end of the half. Kent, 13 points, four for six from downtown. Just a three second difference between shot and game clock. So Nebraska can't quite hold for last shot, but you better believe they'll milk the clock a bit. Scarpelli clearly indicating that. He'll just chill and hang out. Calls for the screen. Here he goes. Step back three. 
Off to the left, and here's Kent to save the day. Carter bounces, Wiersma. Scarpelli nails the three right at the buzzer. And talk about a dagger at the end of the game. Get at the half, look at this open look. See, driving baseline, you have nothing. Great ball reversal there from Wiersma. And then who else other than at the top of the key but Sam Scarpelli. Absolute domination from the three-point line for the Bulldogs. The 11th three of the first half for Nebraska, who will march into their locker room with a 20-point halftime lead for the second straight night. The Bulldogs, 20 minutes from a clean CIT sweep here in Chicago, and we'll have the final 20 for you on the other side. Quick halftime break here on the CUC Sports Network. We'll talk to you in a few. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three.
ninth iteration of the great Concordia Invitational Tournament. And we might be 20 minutes away from a clean Nebraska sweep. The Bulldogs on top of the Falcons by 20 at halftime. Let's break down some of the numbers. Carter Kent, 13 points. Tanner Shuck, 12. Sam Scarpelli, nine. Between the three of them, Carter Gledhill, they've got nine threes, and those three have powered the Bulldogs to a commanding lead. And it's been at the point where if the Falcons take on a good run, we've seen a couple times in really small amounts, they just end it flat out, and the Falcons are able to put another big old three on the scoreboard and really have just kept this train going throughout the night. Fast break points has been a big part of the game. 16 fast break points for Nebraska, just five for Wisconsin. Feels like at times the Bulldogs are just out hustling the Falcons. It is, and it's because of the fast break because you get a team on its heels and really out of sorts, it's not only gonna open up the fast break where you're gonna get the open layup, it's also gonna make it confusing so you can get those open three looks that we've seen so many times tonight. mentioned the Nebraska leading scorers for Wisconsin. It's Joey Zietlow with nine, Jordan Johnson, last year's CIT MVP with eight, and Brandon Keller with seven. Here's what's at stake for the final 20 minutes. If Nebraska holds on for the win, it would be their 28th CIT championship and their fourth under Ben Limbach. If Wisconsin storms back and wins, they'll make it back-to-back -back CIT championships, and it would be the fifth in school history. And also for Nebraska, after the women's team doubled up Wisconsin in the third game of the night to win their 30th championship, if the men's team holds on, it'd be an all-Nebraska championship, an all-Nebraska award ceremony here in River Forest. Still got the all-tournament team to be named, and we have the dance competition and cheer competition to be named too, so a lot yet to come even after this after basketball. Here's Shuck right to the hoop, and he picks up where he left off in the first. You see athleticism, so many teams have been utilizing the baseline and you see right there, almost like an extra space you create because you have that and just nice little reverse layup. Interesting finish to the first half with the Sam Scarpelli buzzer beater and some crisp passing gave him an open look from the top of the key. That was one of my favorite plays of the day. Carter. We've seen a lot of basketball. Might might all be mushing together in your head right now, but what's what's maybe a highlight of the day just from a basketball perspective? Highlight, I think the CUC game that we had, the men's game, that was down to the wire. They were down by double digits at one point, and they clawed their way back in the fourth quarter, coming within one and just a few tenths of a seconds away from pulling their first win in, since 2011 in their title. But I will say this shooting performance that I'm seeing right now from the Nebraska Bulldogs is pretty impressive from behind the arc. And one of the plays of the day came in that Chicago Ann Arbor men's showdown, an Isaac Rudell block. We that saw was huge. Chol Beal get a huge block in the first half of this one, so some nice posterizations as Wiersma just twirls out of three. And let's not also forget about what we just saw in the women's championship game with the Nebraska Bulldogs women's team putting up over 100 points. A 102-47 win to take their seventh straight CIT crown. And that time it was Keller with a nice move. So what's the game plan here for Wisconsin to stay alive? I mean, Nebraska was so hot shooting, they can't possibly keep it going, right? I mean, they've been looking like it right now, just same tempo, and you see they're just getting every loose ball that's coming their way. And if you can't fix the little things like that, it's gonna be hard to even surmount this big 22 deficit. And yeah, these guys are saying, shut your mouth, Sam. We're gonna keep it going. Flowers, no good. Kent the board. Here comes the southpaw, steaming up the court. Gives it to another lefty. Slope thought about three. He'll pull it out. Shuck inside. Wiersma's wide open. Beautiful ball movement 
and you can say it again, beautiful ball movement, and that was just fantastic. Shuck seeing Wiersma cutting across on the baseline again. The Falcons out of shorts on the defensive side. Jordan Johnson, he's been quiet. 18 footer, nope. Joel Beal, the big man, just misses. And he's had a fantastic night so far on the boards, nine of them, that's a game high. Anyone you think could be, in? who do you think is in consideration for MVP on the men's side? It's hard to say right now. I mean, there's so many versatile players right now for Nebraska. I think it's either Tanner Shuck right now. He's been putting on a lights out performance. But Carter Kent's been sweeping in a little bit. He had seven points in the first game. He's four or six from behind the arc tonight. So I think it's either between Shuck, Kent, maybe even getting to the little later, Scarpelli, because he had a good game before too. A lot of options. See if Wisconsin can turn the tide, though, and make us list some of the Falcons. Keller, second chance opportunity. There was a foul down low against Chol Beal. So it'll stay right here with Wisconsin. And they've had their chances, the Falcons, at those kind of second chance points. It's just they haven't been able to convert them because the Bulldogs are so aggressive and physical in the paint. Brandon Keller at the charity stripe. No good on his first. 25 point lead. CUNE starting this half on a 10 2 run. Remember, the Bulldogs are a first half team. They've outscored opponents on the year by over 150 in the first half and barely 20 in the second. But they keep the good times rolling with the three there from Slope. Flowers stuffed by Beal. Kent a long tray. Keller challenging Beal. That was brave of him, given what Beal just did on the last possession. It's smart on Beal, I mean, not getting over happy and trying to force it, because that would probably have been a block, because he was in a bad position even to be set up for that. Nice cut by Shuck. He's fouled. Jordan Johnson saying, hey, I had my two hands straight up in the air. That's not a foul, but. Looks like he initiated a little bit of contact, though, in the paint, so that's probably what the officials saw. The Nebraska women's team, as you can see on the left side of your screen, forming a large part of the student section. They just won the women's CIT crown, and now they're right there, raucous on the front lines. Quick sub here, Ryan Holt comes in. Tanner Shuck, a much needed breather. And the Nebraska women's team starting a defense chant. And that was messy. It's been that kind of night right now from a team that was really sharp last night against Concordia, Chicago. And now it's kind of looked like the, the train has fallen off the rails a little bit. Gage Smith also in the game. He just gave it up to Slope. Wearsma near the baseline to Holt. Almost a dunk. It's two points either way.
Johnson gets it in, and Carter, these next few minutes feel pivotal for Wisconsin. Down by 27. If they're going to make their move, it's got to happen now. It does. It has to because Nebraska right now is 4-5 or five in their last five possessions, and they're just keep on rolling. So you got to make a move now if you're the Falcons. Holtz to Wiersma. Just four to shoot. Justin gives him 69 points. We could say something right now about the game style of the Bulldogs. Is they're just imposing their will on the Falcons, relentless at times. They just look so sharp. He says before a messy turnover. Couple subs here. Lake George, Garrett Hoffman, Grant Karsten, all in the ball game. Karsten out of Decatur, Illinois, from Decatur Lutheran High School, where he owns school records for points in a season and a career. Scored nearly 2,000 points in his high school career. And as a senior, put up 743. What a block from Holt. On the other end, he's short. Lake George rocking the short shorts on this Saturday night. It's Hoffman with the ball. Over to George, crossover, and the Milwaukee native puts it in off the glass. You see, he got a little contact there, but that didn't phase him. He was still strong off his left leg and throwing it off nicely off the top of the glass. You like the short shorts look? It's a trend that's been coming back at some point. It kind is. of a little bit. I don't know, kind of reminds me of just, just like the old 70s basketball yeah. shorts, but I don't think they were that short. They're sort of a renaissance. You get it, you know, your shorts might be get caught in your knees sometimes, but you know, let's just not go too high. Because there was the early 2000s when we had kind of a baggy shorts movement. It was like half sweatpants almost kind of look. It was, but I don't know. I, it's kind of been something that I've seen right, a lot right. in sports. In the just, NBA too, it's yeah. the short shorts coming back. Like kind of what we had with the Magic Johnson era in the 80s. It's cyclical, right? Fashion is cyclical. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> There's Jers, interception, fast break. Bad pass from Wiersma, who puts his head in his hands, upset with himself. His team's up 29, though. He checks out. With Shuck coming back in. Three Bulldogs in double figures. Shuck leading the charge with 18 points. Wiersma and Kent each with Double figures, 15 and 13 off the bench. After the Bulldog foul, here's Lake George under the hoop. Gets it in. It's a 27 point game. It's now or never for the Falcons. Holt rejected and fouled. Carter, you've raved tonight about how crisp and sharp the Bulldogs look, and it's kind of how they've been dating back to the end of December. Go back to December 22nd. Since then, they've won eight of nine. They had a seven game win streak going until they ran into a truck of Morningside University a couple days ago, but this is a really, really hot program right now, and they're playing like it here in the CIT. And that Morningside program that you mentioned they lost to, that was ranked number one in NAIA. So 
not just any. Quite a truck. <laughs> yes, quite a big, massive truck. It's a semi truck, truck 16 wheeler. Oh, yeah, but you see, again, they're just dominant across any division right now that we've seen them play. Wisconsin entered the game hot, too, five of six that they'd won. But they have not looked quite as crisp. George to Hoffman. Bounce pass it down low for Alex Antoni, who's getting his first run of the night. Antoni, a transfer from UW Sheboygan, where last season he averaged 18 points and 12 boards. And that season, Antoni, who's wearing 21 in blue, in one game put up 43 points and 20 rebounds. Here he fails to put it in the hoop. Scarpelli behind the arc, prodding, passing. It's Shuck to the lane. He's short, and Antoni gets a one-handed board. Lake George. Jump ball, it'll stay right here. Chick-fil-A, pretty good. Also a proud sponsor of Concordia University Chicago Athletics. So whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, the Chick-fil-A in Melrose Park has you covered. Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. The 69th iteration of the CIT, which has been going strong since 1951. The brainchild of Coach Pete Peterson, who passed away in 2002. Longtime legendary coach at Concordia St. Louis. Started this tournament in the early 50s. It was just a four team men's tournament at the time. And then in 1965, introduced the women's tournament to it. And now it's a full blown eight team tournament with bands, cheer squads, and the whole nine yards. All tournament teams were introduced a few years after that, and the MVP trophy, the second longest running basketball tournament on planet Earth in its eighth decade. And we're 10 minutes away from starting decade number eight with a Nebraska sweep. Scarpelli to Holt. Ryan, outside, and an offensive foul. It'd be fitting to start the decade with Nebraska domination because that's been the name of the game in the CIT, both on the men's and women's side. The Nebraska programs have the CIT records for most total wins, most titles. The women's team has won 30 times. The men's team, 27, going on 28, as Holt powers it home, and the foul. Ryan Holt with the flush. That's a man's dunk. That is a man's dunk right there. And Lake George looking at the official kind of like, it's like contact, but oh yeah. He got the contact all right, and he might even get on a highlight reel with that. Cherry on top of a three point play. It's a 28 point Nebraska lead. More domination. Jers to Hoffman, who misses the three. Here's two subs, Carter Kent and Brevin Slope. Fans, we'd like to remind you that the CIT and Cougar basketball brought to you in part by Lutheran Public Radio, where you can listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere at lutheranpublicradio.org or on the LPR app. Carter Kent 
Picks up his dribble. Gets it out to Clay Uher, number 44 in white. Getting his first run of the day. This is Slope, easy. 30 point lead. This game has just gone, it, it's, we think that there's many teams that'll go on these lengthy runs and just have really strong scoring runs and they'll soon burn out, but it almost looks like the Bulldogs have stepped it up another level right now. Kent got an awesome block. Then the Bulldogs will stay on defense. Isaiah Tanet's gonna inbound from right under the hoop. High school football star from out west in Northern California. He was an electric quarterback, dual threat, who rushed for 2,000 yards and passed for 2,000 yards as a senior at Highlands High School. He holds the California state record, does Isaiah Tanet, who's got the ponytail in blue. State record for rush yards and touchdowns by a quarterback. In one game, he rushed for 465 yards and scored seven touchdowns in a single game that's as a quarterback. That's insane, that's insane. I mean, you've seen the age of the dual threat quarterback starting to be revamped in the NFL, but. That's another level. Nearly 500 yards in a single game. Oh, and by the way, he was a defensive back too, so in that same game when he was on defense, he got a pick six. Ran back an interception 73 yards. So he actually scored eight times on the night. Have a day, how about that, huh? <laughs> oh, plus he won two titles in track and field. Oh, no big deal. And he was a pretty good uh, basketball player. Anything more to put in the trophy case right there? <laughs> it's a 30 point lead for Nebraska and a 30 second timeout here. Closer far, Chicago Motor Coach has your group transportation needs covered. Chicago Motor Coach is proud to be the official transportation provider of CUC Athletics. 8.27 to go, it's a 30 point Nebraska lead. The Bulldog men dominating, much like the Bulldog women did. And it's been such a balanced effort. Double figure scoring nights from Tanner Shuck, Justin Wiersma, Carter Kent, and then nine points each for Sam Scarpelli and Ryan Holt. Just such a balanced attack for a team shooting 50% from the field. About 45% from behind the arc and 75% from the free throw line. I mean, that's just such efficient, kind of beautiful offense. And there's really nothing, there's no flaws that we've seen right now. Like, they've been so good at so many things, and it's really hard to do that for a full 40 minutes of basketball. They've got 8.18 left. Long three, no good. Now A.J. Watson, the Kansas native, will take it up the court. Kent at the wing, bounces out to Watson. Found Holt down low, who's got his second dunk of the night. And that's just him being sneaky on the baseline and just sneaking behind a clueless Falcon defense. Tanette to George, Lake puts it in. Across the 50 point mark. Bulldogs are sniffing a championship. They've got seven and a half minutes of basketball to play before they can do it. Slope, outside Watson corner three. Yes, sir, A.J. Watson. But look at the pass there by Slope, the no look, confusing the defense and then Watson pulling the trigger. Hoffman a step back at the baseline. Bulldog ball. Holt. Think for the Bulldogs here, you're trying to go for that 100 point mark. Be pretty cool to get on the bus back to Nebraska with two 100 point performances in the title game, yeah? 
The women won 102 to 47 to take the title over Wisconsin. If the men could do it too, that'd be a pretty epic Bulldog domination on it, this Saturday. It would be. Watson? No. But Beal, yes. He's turned into one of my favorite players in this tournament. I just love the hustle that he has. And he's been grabbing every board that's come his way. Yeah, big Chol Beal fan right here. I am. George, a teardrop, comes up empty. And now Slope powering up the court and his pocket picked. George, nice move. Can he go the distance? No. And it'll go the other way. Looking for a place to relax following a big Cougar win. Falcon win, maybe not tonight. Bulldog win. Well, Doc Ryan's on Madison Street has all your post-game needs covered. Head on over to Doc Ryan's after the game. 32-point lead for Concordia, Nebraska. Under Ben Limbach, the seventh year head coach, they won CIT titles in 2014, 16, and 17. About to add 2020 to the list. And in 2014, he became the only coach in CIT history to win a CIT title for both schools as he won a CIT title for Ann Arbor in 2006 and 2007. Yeah, Limbach's had an interesting history as a coach, he spent nine seasons with Concordia Ann Arbor, and he still is the winningest coach in Cardinal program history. Served as the Cardinals AD also from 09 to 2011, won the CIT with them. And now he's sniffing his fourth championship with the Bulldogs. He's a Nebraska alum. He was conference player of the year his senior season at CUNE. Now leading the program he first called home. Thomas Young getting some CIT run, number 50 in white. 6'1 junior out of Clarks, Nebraska coming in. It's a 31 point game. It's all but over with five minutes to go. Barring a last second Wisconsin miracle of miracles. In the corner, Scarpelli, no. Zietlow lost it. It's Young who came up with it. Shuck has led the way with 18 points and he gives it up to Scarpelli here. Wiersma's got 15, out to Scarpelli. Now Young, feels like the Bulldog bench really wants Young to get a look. Seems like the women's team also too, they were yeah. chanting his name and looking to get in too. Here's his chance, he got it! Look at the fans go crazy right there. And those fans are the Bulldogs who put up 102 in their championship win just a couple hours ago. Beal cleaning up the glass. Young gives it up this time. He'll get another look. This time too strong. Just three and a half left as Sean Cassidy calls timeout. 87-53 the score. 329 left and Concordia, Nebraska sniffing a championship. We'll take a pause here. Three and a half left. On the other side, we'll have the home stretch on the CUC Sports Network.
just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Hey there, welcome back here at Geisman Gym. Just three and a half left. Bulldogs on top of the Falcons on their way to another CIT title. Fans at home really appreciate you joining us all weekend long. Four games yesterday, four today, and I'd like to say a special thanks to our incredible crew here at Concordia Chicago. Not only all the administrators who put this event together, just a wonderful weekend, but also our broadcast crew. All the friendly faces who make a part of this incredible team. Ryan McGee, Grace Miller, Julia Spitelli, Kelly Guti, Julia Beers, Shelby Spitz, CJ Selner who leads the charge, my great partner, Carter Gledhill, who never quite lost his voice. Came oh so close, but powered through. We powered through. It's been a pleasure for all of us. If throat coat's out there, I'd be willing to do a sponsorship <laughs> for that, because that saved a good weekend right there. But what a spectacular crew. Everyone you saw on the screen and so many more folks here with the Cougars who have put together a banger of a CIT. At the three minute mark, Nebraska putting its stamp on this weekend. Now we're getting to the point where it's coming to the end of the game and we have to think about an MVP. There's CJ Selner. Oh, uh, the CJ. Jim Egan. Who do you think your MVP is for the, guy, for the guys category? Well, for me, I think Tanner Shuck would be a fitting MVP. 18 points and five boards tonight. He had 13 yesterday, just pretty consistent across the two games. Gives me an MVP award kind of vibe. I think you got so any too. thoughts, my man? I'm thinking Shuck. Tanner Shuck's been really well. 18 points tonight is pretty good. Give credit to Carter Kent, though. He's four for seven behind the line. If I had to give an MVP, I got to give it to Joel Beal. He's got 12 rebounds on the day, and he's been hustling his butt off up and down the court, and he's my fan favorite as of right now. There's something to say for the hustle. Hustle wins championships. Absolutely, and they're about to get a championship. Here's Young again. Something about watching a fan section or a student section go off after a big three at the end of the game, which is always exciting to see. Sammy AJ pulls down the board and the Accra Ghana native brings it up the court. Big number 55. Whoa, that's gotta hurt. We've got ice, I think. I hope. Brandon Keller took that like a champ. Sammy AJ went to save it, chucked it hard right into the face. Of course, accidentally into the face of Keller, and he's got a little laugh. Shake it off, tough guy. So just a dominant effort. Is that three no good from Jackson Hirschfield? Dominant effort from the Nebraska women and then the men just pick it right up. Both of these programs really showing out. Yeah, it's been a fantastic tournament. I think all eight teams have definitely grown and learned something. And it's been a great weekend of competition here at Geisman Gymnasium. We started today just before one o'clock. 76-63 win in the women's consolation, Ann Arbor over Chicago. Then a nail biter in the men's consolation. 67-66, Cardinals just held on to beat the Cougars. Landon Gladney had what many thought was a buzzer beating game winning layup, but 
the buzzer beat him. And it was a one point Cardinal win. In the first championship, the Nebraska women, as AJ puts it through, Nebraska women dominated like they so often do, a 102-47 drubbing to win their 30th CIT championship, taking down Wisconsin. And here in the nightcap, the Bulldog men have delivered. It's Isaiah Tanette with a hard block. The Bulldog men with a complete performance. Four guys in double figures as they have rolled by nearly 40 points on the way to their 28th CIT title. Thirty seconds left. Just last gasp shots here. And of course, as we have all weekend long, you'll hear from the winning coach after the game here on the Cougar Sports Network, Ben Limbach. Now, as my partner mentioned, has CIT titles with both Concordia Ann Arbor and Concordia Nebraska. About to pick up his fourth for his alma mater. And with the shot clock off, the Bulldogs can dribble it out. 37 points and a foul from Jordan Johnson. Sean Cassidy, the Wisconsin head coach, saying don't foul. Let him dribble it out. And the celebration will soon commence for Nebraska. Sammy A.J. coming to Seward all the way from Ghana. And this one is over. For the 28th time, the Nebraska men win the CIT. And this weekend in Chicago, a Nebraska sweep. The women win, the men win. Dominance all around for the Bulldogs. You couldn't write a better perfect Picture perfect ending to a great tournament if you're the Bulldogs, winning two championships and doing it in offensive style. Four Bulldogs in double figures. Tanner Shuck, Justin Wiersma, Carter Kent, and Ryan Holt. They made 15 threes. How about the shooting performance? Pretty much a clinic in the first half from the Bulldogs. It was 52% from the field. 50% from behind the arc. It was an overall fantastic shooting performance for a Bulldogs team that just looked like they did everything right on offense and defense. So in a minute, we'll hear from Ben Limbach and welcome him up into the booth. And then after that, we'll have the trophy presentation, the all-tournament teams, the most valuable players, and a presentation to both Nebraska teams. It'll be a pretty much all Nebraska trophy presentation as Coach Limbach is coming up into the booth up the bleachers and here he is. Coach, congratulations on another it. CIT championship. Thank For you. you, it's your fourth with Nebraska. You won a few at Ann Arbor. What does it mean to win again? for your alma mater. Well, it's a special time. Anytime you get a get a play in front of the atmosphere and, and uh, you know, just see your guys have fun and enjoy that. Uh, what a special moment. I mean, hats off to Wisconsin. They got, uh, you know, a great team. I felt like we came out and had some good rhythm today and, and I felt like our guys really wanted it and I'm so proud of them. Your team looked really crisp, sharp yeah. cuts, clean Thank passes. You. You've been rocking and rolling in pretty much the last month. What's going right? Well, they're buying into the process, and they're buying into each other, and, and uh, there's a lot of team camaraderie right now, and I think that's where it's, it starts, and, and uh, great leadership in the locker room. And They're a fun group. We're having a blast right now. It looked like Ryan Holt especially oh, yeah. was having a lot of fun. He had some nice dunks. What was the vibe around Ryan? Oh, he's a tremendous competitor, and, and uh, you know, it's fun to see him show it today. And, and uh, you know, he's been doing that, uh, you know, kind of close thing. But uh, today was awesome. <laughs> awesome, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Congratulations appreciate it. on another championship. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our winner in the chair division is Concordia Ann Arbor.
in the dance competition. Fourth place is Concordia, Nebraska. Third place, Concordia, Ann Arbor. Second place, Concordia, Chicago. And that means the winner of CIT dance competition, Concordia, Wisconsin. And now we will award the team trophies. The women's division winner for the seventh year in a row, Coach Drew Wilson and his Lady Bulldogs of Concordia, Nebraska. At this time, we will introduce the women's all-tournament team. We ask if those players are here to please step out here, receive their award, and we would ask that they would stay on the floor till we have all five members introduced and we can take a group photo. All right, women's all-tournament. From Concordia, Chicago, Charisma Robinson. From Concordia, Ann Arbor, Tristan Williams. From Concordia, Wisconsin, Emily Haifman. From Concordia, Nebraska, Philly Lammers.
And from Concordia, Nebraska, the most valuable player of this year's women's CIT, Grace Berry. Congratulations to our women's all-tournament team. And now we go to the men's awards. First, the team trophy, making its way back to Seward after a three-year absence. Head coach Ben Limbach and his Concordia, Nebraska Bulldogs. And now we will introduce the men's all-tournament team. From Concordia, Chicago, Rashawn Amos. From Concordia, Ann Arbor, Gerald Booker. From Concordia, Wisconsin, Joey Zietlow. From Concordia, Nebraska, Sam Scarpelli. And from Concordia, Nebraska, the men's MVP is Tanner Shuck.
Congratulations, men's all tournament team. And now, ladies and gentlemen, He's here. before we all go our separate ways, have a seat first for a second. Our tradition here at CIT is to have a closing time of devotion. And for that, we're going to bring back Pastor Dan Hudson, Concordia Chicago class of 99, and he will give the final words for this year's tournament. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you, not only on uh, great basketball, uh, but great sportsmanship, a lot of fun, a lot of camaraderie. Uh, there's a lot that separates us when we come together. We root for different teams, we wear different colors, we have different cheers. We're gonna go back to different states, different cities, different campuses, but I think it's a good reminder to uh, remember what unites us is greater than what divides us. Uh, Ephesians chapter four says, make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. We are different. We live different places, we go to different schools, but we are all under one spirit. We are all under one love. We are all under one blood of Jesus Christ, and that is what unites us. So as we go today celebrating great competition, uh, let us also celebrate the things that unite us. Uh, we are all part of one family, brothers and sisters of one family. So I want to in invite you to uh, maybe start a new chant. We've got CU Dub, we got CUC, we got C-U-A-A, -A, we got C-U-N-E. What if we would do something different that would talk about more that unites us, that divides us, and let's do one instead as we close out tonight. See you in heaven. See you in heaven. Come on, see you in heaven. I'll see you in heaven. That's right, come on, I'll see you in heaven. I'll see you in heaven. That's right, see you in heaven. See you in heaven. That's right, that's what unites us. We have one hope. That one hope is Jesus Christ and we share that together. Will you please stand with me while we pray? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that there is one hope that you have given us found in Jesus Christ through his blood, through his death, through his resurrection. Lord, you have made us one family because of the faith that we share. We pray that you would Always unite us, Lord, under that one head, that we would always be brothers and sisters together, shining the same light for the world to see, that they also would know the love of Jesus like we know it. We pray, Lord, that you keep us safe as we travel back to our homes, back to our campuses, Lord. Be the Lord of our lives, the Lord of our travels, the Lord of our conversations, and today, let it be the Lord, let you be the Lord of our celebration. We thank you, Lord, for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And now receive these words. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he watch over you, guard you, give you his grace and favor. In Jesus' name, go in the Lord. Amen. Phenomenal. That was phenomenal, man. Huh? Oh,